Today we're going to be creating our very own fall in a bottle. So I want you to think about if you could capture your favorite moments of fall and put it inside of a bottle, what would that memory or image look like to you? So every person's going to have a different view of fall and even your mood for the day can be captured. So let's take a look at a contemporary artist named Jen Arani and see how she uses the nature that's in her own backyard and how that incorporates and creates her art. She's very nature inspired and I'm excited to show you what she captures inside her artwork and sometimes inside her own bottles. Today we're going to be learning about an artist, a contemporary artist, who is named Jen Arani. I know we've probably seen some of her work before, but she's a watercolor nature artist and she's also a graphic designer. So when you take a look at her work, you'll notice that she's really influenced by the nature and the world that's all around her. She really likes to add in bright colors and she uses those colors in a big contrast by using the black and white of her line art. So when you look at her mountains or the landscape that she's creating, that's all in black and white using her pen. And then she has the watercolor with um, the landscape design behind it, which is typically her constellations, her stars, and the really colorful night skies. So you can find her work on a lot of social media platforms like Instagram, and she also has her uh, work for sale on Etsy and a few other websites as well. So what she describes herself is that, you know, in order to get her inspiration, she loves to be outdoors. She likes to go hiking in the woods and basically um, just enjoy the landscape and nature all around her. So both her and her husband live in Columbia, Maryland, and this is just some examples of her artwork, which is going to inspire us for our piece today. Now that we've learned a little bit more about Jen Aranyi, let's take a look at this example here. This is the inspiration today. Look at the different size bottles that she has and what she's captured of the nature and the landscape in there. What colors do you notice? And what stands out? Which one draws your eye? Or what shape are you most interested in using? So I'm going to pause this here for a moment and I want us to think, what do you notice in these pictures? Now that we've taken a bit of time to talk about the things that we notice in these pictures, I wanted to show you another example. And this is something I had found online and it inspired me to look a little bit more into the artist of Jen Arani. And I also really liked what these students created of capturing fall in their bottles as well. So I want you to think, what would you put in yours? Would you have, you know, a favorite memory such as playing catch or playing football, maybe playing hockey outside? I know those are all sports related. Is it a movie that you really enjoy? Is that something that you turn on every time it's fall? Do you have s'mores along a bonfire or do you go camping? Do you get to play outside and jump in the leaves or swing around outside on a giant tire swing on a tree? What are some of your most favorite memories? And if you could take that memory and put it inside a bottle so you could see it at any time, what would that look like? So right now in our sketchbook, I want you to sketch a couple ideas. Don't even worry about drawing a bottle. Just kind of write words or draw quick little sketches of what memory stands out for you in fall. Is it picking, picking pumpkins, carving them, trick-or-treating, anything. Now that we've practiced a little bit in our sketchbooks, we're just warmed up by doing some quick ideas and jotting down our notes. What I want us to do on this 
white 9 by 12 piece of paper is let's start off by drawing our bottle. So I'm going to start up at the top and do a little line so I can kind of get an idea of where I want my bottle cap to be. And then I'm going to do these curves to create the lip of the bottle cap. And then angle them down a little bit like this. The next thing I'm going to do is make the neck of my bottle. So think about how long do you want it to be? Look at those examples I have in the top left corner of Jenna Ronnie's and see if any of those inspire you. The next thing I did is I put a line at the bottom to kind of give my idea or give myself some reference. How big do I want my bottle to be or how long? Do I want it to be a big curve or do I want to go straight out and down? So right now I'm just drawing it out a little bit and then stopping right before that line. Don't worry if it's not a perfect shape. Even when the bottle is blown, you know, like glass um, artists, they don't even have theirs exactly the same either. And you'll notice mine's not exactly either because I'm drawing slightly on an angle and not really in front of my paper. Once you've created your shape, connect it on the bottom. Don't worry about trying to make it a three-dimensional piece where we can see the bottom half of it. Um, we're just going to kind of leave it that way. So what I want to do now is I'm going to add a little bit more detail to kind of help create this bottle effect. So I'm going to create a cork. You can have yours inside the bottle, as you can see Jenna Ranyi's, or you can have it coming out of it. So all I did was draw an oval, and then I have the two parallel lines and I connect it with that same curve. I want mine to show that's a little see-through as well, but then here I'm going in and I wanted mine to be kind of not all the way out yet, as if I'm still capturing fall. It's not quite all inside my bottle yet. So when you're drawing your details, you can see I'm just going nice and slow and I'm just going in and adding some darker parts of value to create some contrast for me. You, instead of lines, you can always go in and add little stipple marks, which are the little dots. That's what I'm adding in here as well. And whenever you do the little stipple dots, you're not banging the paper. Instead, you're doing very light, gentle taps as if it's barely touching the paper because you don't want to break it. You can add those same little dots along the edges or different parts of your bottle if you would like as well. What I'm doing next is just creating a little line barrier so that way I have some reflection, but I also have some of that thickness and it's just going to make it kind of pop out a little bit more. I also like Jenna Ronnie's idea of her stickers. So whenever you have a sticker, just look at the image and then there's this really thick white line that goes around it. And because we're working on white paper, what I'm going to do is use my black marker and I'm going to make a nice thick outline along the outside of my bottle. It's your choice if you want to do that or you can just leave it as is and just have a thinner line on the inside. For this next part, what I want you to think about is what are you gonna put in the foreground? So for the foreground, that is something, what is closest to you? So right here, I'm just creating a little bit of a ground and I'm adding in a big branch that I'm going to add some leaves on. And then what I'm going to do is add in a fox because just earlier this year, I found a red beautiful fox laying in my grass and it's just such a beautiful memory that's still stuck in my mind. So I'm going to create that and then I'm going to do a line 
somewhere on my paper and that's going to be my horizon line. A horizon line is what's the difference between the sky and the ground. So what I want you to do first is add your foreground lines and that's anything that's really close and big to you. Your middle ground, it's a little bit further away, but not as big. And your background is gonna be something really small and far away. So think about if a mountain is way far away in the back, but the tree is right in front of you, what's gonna look bigger? The tree's gonna look bigger because it's closest to you. So have fun with adding in these decorations. You can see how I develop and create my own and we'll take it from there. have the option of coloring in your design. I'm going to be using crayons, but you can use colored pencils. Um, if you used marker, just be careful that, you know, with your finer details, it's hard um, sometimes and it might overpower the black details that you created. So try to not use the darkest of colors and leave certain areas black and white like Jenna Ranhi does. Um, where I suggest just doing the background or a few components versus all of your black and white. But for me, I really wanted to showcase that setting sun and those really bright, vibrant fall colors. And so when you go to color, I want to challenge you to use at least two or three colors in each area that you're coloring. So for my sky right here, I'm doing a blend of orange, red, and yellow, and I'm going to put a little bit of blue on top of it. And when I do my grass later, you'll notice I'm going to use my green, but I'm going to add some yellow in there and maybe highlights or pops of red because there are the leaves that are going to be falling down. And I'm adding in some shadows and different things when I get close to a object that I've done in black. With the ink, I'm going to push a little bit harder with my crayon, and that's just going to give it a little bit more contrast to help it pop off the paper a little bit more. So take this time to either fill in your entire drawing or just parts of it, just like Jenna Rani does. <music> 